So, should we buy or sell Sprouts Farmers Market? First off, read this disclaimer carefully. And do your good deed of today by liking and subscribing. So we can find the theme under the megatrends. I call it clean food and beverage. So 28-ish percent here from the 52-week low, minus 33% uh, pullback so far. So here is a uh, sprouts. So yeah, so 34-ish percent from the low and a 9% pullback. Here is uh, the company's website. So find the new favorite on the hunt for the next best thing or an exclusive treasure that you've just gotta have. Get ready to fill your cart with our newest, most excite items full of goodness. Yeah, this is my cybersecurity program. It is really aggressive, so... A bit of a digression, but uh, yeah, be a bit careful when choosing cybersecurity programs because some they just almost want to like close off the internet entirely. But yeah, here are some of their uh, new products, uh, healthy stuff. So here is the chart. Weekly data points. So in the super big picture, we do have a super key technical pattern here, and that is a monster rounding bottom pattern. That is, of course, you know, it is a very bullish technical pattern, but that is also a very long term pattern. So super long term, things are looking good for this stock. But something we can also see very clearly is that this stock loves time cycles, huge. So here we have these big time cycles. Uh, recently we have had, you know, these smaller, but uh, nonetheless very um, fierce time cycles. You see that we go up and then down, up and then down. We are currently part of um, a rising phase uh, and we are, you know, towards the end of that rising phase. If we look at, you know, the previous rallies for this uh, stock, uh, if you see this one, rally, 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 rally. But what happened before, as you can see, uh, it, it is very rare for this stock to, you know, get stuck in some long term consolidation range like this. You know, it doesn't do that. What instead this stock has a very strong tendency to do throughout its history is to when it peaks, it just uh, flips and goes uh, down. Uh, it, it doesn't goof around uh, consolidating. Um, so, given the current technical setup, uh, where we have had very strong bullish momentum, and now the bulls are running out of momentum, uh, almost the entire history of this stock strongly suggests that we are due a deeper correction. That has almost happened literally every single time in the past. Uh, there's been a few times where we have consolidated a bit. Um, if we measure here, this was 100, 140 days. And this period here, this was 77 days of consolidation, but then we did pull back substantially. So how long have we sort of been playing around here? 77 days. Yeah, I mean, the odds here are very high that we will see what tends to happen for this stock, which means a correction. Going here to the daily data points. Yeah, uh, the trend is pretty darn clear. When, it, when this stock corrects, it goes down uh, substantially. So let's actually look here at these other indicators to get some idea of what we could expect. So here we have the RSI range. You see here that when we reach the high point, high point of weekly RSI, historically it's been a very good time to consider short positions. You see how accurately it's been on calling these highs. Also the distance from the 20, 50, 100 and the 200 week moving averages. It, it was very recently at the levels that's been really good for bears in the past. Also the MACD has a very clear trend. Daily data points. Yeah, you just get a bit more detailed picture, but the same picture basically is uh, showing its uh, outline. Um, this stock just has a very strong tendency to explore the high and low end of RSI. It happens very frequently. It is rare for this one to get stuck in the low end of RSI, also rare for it to get stuck in the high end. Uh, something that is, however, you know, um, a bit bullish here is that accumulation distribution is strong. So that is, um, that is, however, bullish. So if we go here to the laboratory, 
So let me give this one a score. So first off, what is the line in the sand? I think that the time time cycles uh, are definitively very strong, and uh, we can write bear because um, the part the, the part of the time cycle that we expect now is the bearish phase, which means that you know it's going to go down. Um, so that is that that was a very clear trend in the chart, and um, we can also say overbought. We have recently been overbought. Okay, in terms of the technicals, the overwhelming number of times where we have had similar uh, signals, uh, we usually saw a deeper pullback, not simply just a correction, but this stock simply doesn't have a track record of consolidating sideways. It either goes up or it goes down. It's very either or. So the primary trend would then be definitively more in favor of a bearish take, minus four. Next, we will look at seasonality. So here we have, uh, to the right, we have the average price over the last five and seven years in the, through the seasonality forecaster. And we do see that there's a very strong tendency for season, seasonal strength to peak around 11th of March. And then it gets substantially weaker here, heading towards uh, the 8th of June. And that fits very nicely with what we saw with the time cycles. Looking here to the left, uh, we see that over the last five years, um, yeah, February is, you know, mediocre. Uh, March, April can have strength. Uh, when we look at the last 10 years, uh, then we do see that there's clear weakening from February towards April. So, um, yeah. It, this, this certainly corroborates what we saw with the time cycles. The thing is that the time cycle tool, um, it is uh, sort of like a hybrid of a technical tool and also a seasonality tool. So I think that given that we have the classical seasonality tools and the time cycle tool uh, corroborating each other, I think that I will give this a, a, bit, one, a bit one a bit solidly here to uh, the bears. So I think I will give this one actually a minus five. Uh, there's pretty pretty high likelihood that um, the bearish seasonality will play itself out, given how extremely consistent uh, this stock has been uh, in terms of seasonality. Then we go to the fundamentals. Uh, the interesting thing about this stock is that options are available. Uh, so there are wa ways to put on a bearish position. And, you know, be right even if you are wrong, because through options you can benefit of, t of the time decay of options. But yeah. Okay, anyway, let's just look here at the fundamentals. So Saks is uh, definitively feeling tremendous love for this uh, stock. Uh, number two buy, A value, B growth, A momentum. Industry rank, top 34%. Uh, category food, natural food products. Uh, there is no dividend, $3.2 uh, billion in market cap. When we go here to the insiders, uh, we do see that uh, we have buy, sell, buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. We don't have a transaction value here on the buys. We only have it here on the sells. Yeah, but we do have the number of shares here in terms of the accumulation. Okay. Anyway, uh, I think that you know this looks this looks frankly bullish. Uh, when we go here. Um, and we go to the consensus estimates. So we have 19 analysts covering the stock and the average price target is minus 2.8% uh, below the current stock price. Highest is 37% above, lowest is 26% below. So uh, when it comes to the fundamentals, we have a situation where Saks is very bullish uh, and the Price targets, you know, among the analysts is basically telling us that the stock is fairly valued. So the so the analysts they do not see much upside. But I think I will give this one slightly here to the bulls. I think I will give the bulls uh, a two. Uh, so give them some of the benefit um, that they get from Saks. Uh, but you know, uh, the price targets are a big deal though because a lot of institutions 
they will only buy a stock if uh, the price target is you know significantly above because they need to be able to um, basically have someone to point to as well if they make a mistake so it's very convenient for the mutual funds to have analysts who have given you know bullish price targets because uh, yeah it's sort of like a get get out of jail free card yeah, uh, there's um, the, having the ability to point fingers and to shift blame to other people that is very very common in uh, the financial markets. Yeah. Okay. So here we have uh, the uh, relative performance uh, uh, rundown. Uh, we do see that there's a um, 69% correlation with the S&P 500. 70% uh, with PBJ, which is the food and the beverage ETF. 61% with uh, BFIT, which is the health and wellness ETF. And then we have 55% with DBA, which is the agriculture ETF. On the shorter term correlation, 32% SPY, 77% PBJ, uh, minus 71% here with BFIT. And then 73% here with the DBA. Okay, so if we look long term and also short term, yeah, the strongest correlation we do get here is with the PBJ. So let's quickly do a technical analysis of PBJ. So let's get PBJ here on the uh, on the charts. So in terms of the weekly data points, we, we do see that PBJ, it's been on a very strong run. Um, one of the of the bullish arguments for food and beverage stocks is that, you know, we do have inflation in food prices. Uh, the thing is that that is a very simplistic take, though, because people only have that much money in their wallet. Hence, if they spend more money on food, they will spend less money on other things. So everything in the economy is interconnected. Uh, so ask yourself the question, if um, it was just inherently very bullish for a stock uh, that, you know, the price of the product goes up, then why shouldn't Coca-Cola just uh, double the price of a Coke? Well, you know, of course, if, if Coca-Cola were to double the price of, of uh, Coke, uh, would the transaction value per Coke go up? Sure, but the volume would be affected. So there is this very intricate uh, relationship between the price of the product and the, the volume. Okay, there's a very, uh, very interconnected relationship as such. Sure, in some aspects, higher food prices are bullish for the stocks, but it can have a very negative effect on volume and also on the discretionary uh, segment of the food industry. And a very large part of it is discretionary, meaning it is certain foods that you don't actually need to buy to survive, but you buy it because, you know, it's uh, you're willing to pay the premium. Anyway, we have seen a very strong rally here, uh, very unlike uh, Sprouts. Uh, we do see that this uh, ETF has a strong tendency of consolidation. So here, after this big run, it all of a sudden decided to have 224 days of consolidation. Uh, during this major, after this major run, then it spent a whopping, uh, you know, almost 2,000 days consolidating before we had a breakout. So yeah, this it's, it's very possible that uh, we could have consolidation, well, a consolidation period for the PBJ, uh, during which uh, the market it just spends a lot of time figuring out what higher food prices actually means for these food and beverage companies because it's not you know as simple as people think you know that all the stocks will just go to the moon okay uh, so here we have the relationship between sprouts farmers market and the pbj you know food and beverage etf uh, we do see that uh, we are going from you know a, pr a period here of uh, Sprouts massively underperforming. So now we are sort of entering a period where we are going more sideways. Um, it is possible that this will be resolved in this way. Uh, we don't have the eviden evidence of that yet. But this certainly seems like a trend change that it's been beneficial for Sprouts in the sense that it's not 
like systematically underperforming the broader ETF. So this is interesting, but still just uh, basically stuck moving sideways. If we look at, you know, uh, PBJ against uh, the SPY. So you see here that, you know, the, um, the food and beverage ETF, it has been underperforming uh, the SPY very aggressively for a long time. Uh, it's reached uh, a new low in this relationship, um, you know, uh, late uh, last year. Uh, we are seeing some strengths strength that we haven't seen in some time though. Uh, you could argue that if you look at, um, so let me just draw that in, like uh, this. You see that these uh, highs here, they look a bit uh, similar. So let me just draw it in a bit more accurately, like this and this. So this looks more bullish than what we saw, you know, back here where the right high is significantly lower than the left high. Uh, but we don't have anything close to uh, a breakout yet. Uh, we have gone from uh, massive underperformance to more of an even battle between the PBJ and uh, the SPY. But sure, it is possible that we could enter a period where uh, the PBJ stops massively underperforming the, the S&P 500, spends some time sort of being a bit equal, maybe longer term it will outperform. Here we can quickly look at the seasonality uh, between these two pairs. Uh, usually the food and beverage ETF, it strengthens heading towards the 21st of March, then weakening heading towards uh, late May. So uh, to go back here to the score, in terms of relative performance, uh, the ETF, which Sprouts Farmers is strongest correlated with the PBJ. It has already been on a very big run and that ETF did have a strong tendency of, of spending a bunch of time consolidating after the run. Uh, when we looked at the relationship between Sprouts and the PBJ and also between the PBJ and the S&P 500, there were some bullish, potentially bullish signs in the uh, in development, but it still is very early. I do think I will give this one a bit to the bulls, uh, give them a bit of a benefit of the doubt, give them a one, but that it's very mild. So taking all the data together, I do feel with this minus 1.5, that I feel more bearish than bullish. A key part of this bearish thesis is the line in the sand. So the time cycles were very clean and there's a very high probability that we will see a significant declining phase for the simple fact that this stock does not have a history of consolidating after rallies. It doesn't do that. We looked at the chart, it was pretty clear. It likes to just full blow, pull back massively. It's just the, the trend, right? And uh, yeah, so that, that is the primary take care. Whatever you do, of course, uh, you want to, uh, you know, use stops.